it probably goes down in the category of you're somewhat surprised, but maybe you're not as surprised as you expected you possibly could have been. And that is, of course, about the news from the WWE this past week that they future endeavored Big Cass's ass. They sent him packing. It's a little bit of a surprise. Maybe more than a little bit of a surprise. I mean, the guy literally goes from working multiple pay-per-view matches against Daniel freaking Bryan to now he's gone from the damn company. Well, I guess him and Enzo can now reunite on the independent scene. Oh, baby! And the first reaction to this is, frankly, big skipty skip whoop de whoop like, who the fuck was Big Cass? I know every once in a while you might get some type of glimmer of hope. You look at it and be like, oh, that was a decent heel promo. He occasionally does these heel things. But in the grand scheme of things, he didn't fucking matter, and everybody knows it. This was a dude coming off of an ACL injury. Who knows when the lack next time he was going to get freaking hurt. I mean, where was the real money-making potential out of a Big Cass? I mean, where was it really? He had a funky looking shape as big and tall as he was, but that's what he was. He was like big and tall, but he had no real musculature. He was kind of, you know, a little bit frumpy or lumpy, if you want to say that. Like, what was the fucking appeal for the guy from an aesthetic standpoint? And from an in-ring standpoint, he certainly was nothing special. And yes, you could say as a heel, he did some decent work, but this was still the same guy who, for the most part, had to sit there on the mic and carry Enzo's bags, because Enzo actually knew what the hell he was doing, and Big Cass largely did not. But when you hear about the reports of, him sitting there and going berserk on a plane and ripping the door off of the bathroom so that way the ladies had to sit there and potentially use the bathroom with the door open to him getting drunk apparently, big shotting veterans and kicking them out of the backstage area to treating people like shit, the, the Trumper stuff, which I don't think would have anything to do with it because frankly... Uh, Linda works in the current administration's cabinet. I'm just saying. But all that other shit, the bad behavior on the plane, the drunk, the alleged drunkenness, the getting into it with people backstage, going into business for himself. What I think is kind of ridiculous about that is, though, you got Vince and others that sit there and talk about people need to take chances and then they take risks. And then when they do, even though on the one hand you're talking out of this side of their, your mouth that they need to freaking do it, then you come back on the other side of your mouth and you're like, no, you shouldn't have done that. Stick to the script, bitch. Like, which the fuck one is it? I mean, what a highly hypocritical thing to say. You're literally setting up people in a lose-lose, can't possibly overcome and win situation. Either they stick to the script and it sucks, or they try to go off the script and do something different, original, and you blast them for it and bury them for it any fucking ways. Whereas you still, if they follow the script exactly as you design it, all of a sudden one day Vince loses interest or he doesn't believe, he's going to bury you anyways. What the fuck difference does it make? You'll wonder why some of these guys now might turn down the higher upside of the money of being a main event or semi-main event WWE level talent to work on the independent scene where they could sit there and get these different companies to pay for their travel expenses, pay for the rental, pay for the hotel, to sit there and give them a decent payout where they're not beholden just to that one company and the whims of that company, even though you're an independent contractor, you totally are fucking WWE's paid slave in a lot of ways. I just, to me, when I look at something like this, it's like, why would we just immediately terminate? I wonder if there's something else that was ultimately the straw that broke the camel's back. Because was there previous discipline? Had he been previously suspended? Had he previously been reprimanded? You know, you just sit there and go from, he's wrestling Daniel Bryan on pay-per-view to a couple days later, he's getting booted the hell out of the company. Seems a little bit extreme to me. But it is really no big deal. And it really is no big loss. Because while Cass was big, Big Ass was just another guy. Let's not get too caught up in anything. He really was just another guy. And the WWE can just plug somebody else into that spot and produce the same type of mediocre results. So while I was caught off guard and a little bit surprised, maybe with some of the stuff we had already heard about Cass and some of his uh, behind-the-scenes locker room behavior, we probably shouldn't have been that surprised and you know what? 
Goodbye. Good riddance. Go with Enzo and fucking try to revive your shtick that WWE fucking gave you.